everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and today we have a new collection. Okay, we're looking at a ton of stuff from the Kat Von D new 10, 10 year anniversary gold collision, co collision, okay, um, or collection, but whatever you prefer is fine. Um, I just like to make up words. So you guys, obviously I have the brush set right here. I have the palette right here. I've picked up the, I pretty much everything except for that stupid chest, which we'll get into my thoughts while I'm putting on some eyeshadow so I don't waste any time. But let's start off with the palette, which I do have swatched right here. This is a first impression, so I will be going through giving you guys all the swatches, the names, the close-up. You know how it goes here. Let's go ahead and start first with the packaging. All right, first of all, feels very nice, heavy, sturdy, feels very nice, very high-end, very luxury. It doesn't feel plasticky at all. The front of this actually has this really beautiful like portrait mural-esque moment that I'm living for. I love this so much. You do get 16 shadows that are 0 0.06 ounces a piece, so I can't bitch about the shades or the sizes because you have a nice full spectrum color arrangement, which is great. A beautiful mixture of mattes and shimmers, and the size of these is actually beautiful. 0 0.06 is bigger than a standard Urban Decay shadow, which is 0 0.05, so these are actually on the low larger side in that sense. Now, this palette is $52. Now, oh, oh my god. <sighs> Heart's beating, guys. Heart is beating. Drop my $52 damn palette. I don't think so. Anyways, this is a $52 palette. Now, I was a little bit like, holy shit, that's expensive. Is it in line with like high-end shadows? Yes. Do I think $52 is like a couple dollars too high? Yes. I would say a palette like this would normally run high-end right around $45-ish dollars, but I feel like they tacked on that extra because it's 10th anniversary limited edition. Blah, 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 blah. All the crap that quite personally, like, I don't care about. So I do think the packaging is beautiful though. There's a lovely aesthetic here. However, um, my one of my biggest arguments or bitches, I guess you could say is this brush set right now and I'm going to talk about this a little out of order this brush set it's a hundred and twenty five dollars I know now if you think about it that's twenty five bucks a brush right one two three four five yes so twenty five dollars a brush really isn't awful if you think about high-end brushes it's not uncommon for a brush to run high-end anywhere from 20 to 45 dollars on up um i recently bought and returned some of the nars brushes because they were trash and those were 49.95 or 50 bucks so really i mean there is a lot to be said but oh, i haven't used these yet obviously we're going to be using these to apply products on the actual face but one of my issues was you came out with a 52 dollar eyeshadow palette you came out with a 52 dollar eyeshadow palette and a brush set, and a brush set that includes no eyeshadow brushes. It has the Lock It In Precision Powder Brush, a contour brush, a Lock It Setting Powder Brush, a foundation brush, which I would never use for foundation, and a concealer brush. You didn't release any of those items in this collection, aside from one highlight. Like, I, I don't know. Just me, but I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. So, let's go ahead, let's zoom in, and actually, you know what, before we zoom in, how about I do this, because I always forget. Here is your shot of the palette. I always forget to do this, because I have the worst memory, and you guys are like, Paige, we'd love to see the colors, and I'm like, too bad. So, now we're going to zoom in, we're going to run through all the colors on the arm, if I can figure out which direction this goes. Is it, how, okay, so how do the, how do the names on the back of these palettes go? Does it go like this? So it would be Adele, Ad Ad Adel, or does it go like this and it's an exact mirror of the back? Uh-oh. I don't know. I'm going to guess. And if I'm wrong, you are just going to look at the pretty colors like it's a rainbow in the sky and call it a day. Well, first up we have a matte brown that I'm hoping is named Leifer or Lafar, Lala, Sylvia, Egypt, <laughs> Gina or Gina. I mean, whichever you prefer. Ashley, Malice, Adele or Adel or something beautiful because look at that shine. Chad, which is actually a matte color that is about the same color as my skin tone, so oops. Caroline, Sarah, Kelly, Catherine Squared or 2 Catherine or Catherine Double, I don't know, I'm thinking Catherine Squared. Nancy, Alexandra, ooh, so close. And Melanie. So this right here is the entire palette. Even if the names are wrong, you guys, sorry, the palette is still correct. Look at those colors, queen. You guys, um, I have a little bit of a, of a bitch right now. So this is my old Morphe Y16, and I bought new ones, right? So I just took it out of the package to use in this video because it happened to come in the same day this collection came in. And um, this is the Morphe Y16 I was using, and this is the new Morphe Y16. The font and everything on the handle is different, which I'm like, okay, whatever. But literally the brushes are different. Like, 
They have different widths, they're different lengths. They're not the same thickness. And it's not just because mine is like blown out, like they literally feel different. Like this one is like longer, like what, what is going on? It is, it's like, like a eighth of an inch longer, the white one is, the new one. What in the hell, why? Why would you rack a perfect thing? I don't understand. Is it because you could make it cheaper? Mm. All right, well, I'm done bitching now. So I think for this palette, what we're gonna do, we're gonna have to start, we're gonna have to start with some standard crease colors. So I'm thinking we're gonna start with, ooh, I really, I love these two tones right here. This one is pulling more red on camera, but it's really more like a like a burnt orange sienna kind of red. Um, a really nice mixture of the two, but I think I wanna start with working both of these through the crease, and then we're gonna kinda reevaluate from there. So yeah, and I think that's where we're going to start and again starting that out on a morphe y16 for the lighter yellow shade um picks up a good amount of product let's see how it blends um yeah like literally this doesn't even feel like the same brush this does not feel like the morphe y16 that i know and love what the hell is up with this crap it's not fluffy you guys there's nothing fluffy let's go in with my old one. Oh yeah there's a good fluffy crease brush yes and I bought new ones, too, like trying to be a good noodle. Like, you're supposed to buy new brushes. Oh, Morphe. It just irritates. And they're probably like, oh, no one will notice those eight hairs we stripped out, and it's going to save us an eighth of a penny. Like, um, I notice. Thank you. <laughs> Clearly, they're knocking on my door to be an affiliate. Yeah, I know. You guys, there are so many people that I'm like, yeah, they're never going to want to work with me. I'm, <laughs> I have a feeling I'm not their cup of tea. Wow, that orange is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, and I'm keeping the camera a little bit farther away because you guys have, a couple of you have been like, hey, how about you not be so damn close? It goes in and out, like the, the focus has a hard time. So I thought maybe this, or is that too far away? Like what about right there? Maybe that's perfect. I do need to move my chair. You guys, I'm a hot mess. Woo! Okay, <laughs> had to move my chair down. Maybe that's a little bit better. That's okay, because now we're not like too close, but we're a good, we're a good level of closeness. All right, so... Now that that is all worked in, wow, I really like that color. Holy crap, is that pretty. Um, now I'm going to go in with this new Y16 crap, and I'm going to go into that more burnt orange sienna. Like, look at that color. Woo, girl. We are picking up color. These mattes are laying down real nice. And I'm not going to lie, you guys, I when I first saw this palette online, I was not excited. Like, I almost didn't pick it up to review it. And I am currently liking it now. We're gonna see, we're gonna see how I feel about it in a little while. But as of this moment, not too shabby. I'm trying to decide what I want to do for like that main pop of color because I've played with all the colors so much recently that I'm like, do I want to play it down like make it a little more demure? Do I want to do like a cut crease halo eye moment? Um, I don't know. I'm having a hard time deciding. Because part of me was like, oh, how cool would it be to just do, like, a nice, like, like, look, oh, my God, that looks pretty even on camera. Wow, that never happens. Like, that never happens. Wow. Okay, so what do we want to do next? I thought about playing around with that really deep blue, matte blue right here because I love that color. But I don't think I'm going to like it with this color. I think that that and the sienna are going to fight. And I don't want no fighting in my house. No fighting on my lids or in my house, okay? Okay. What do I want to put on my face? I'm so tired. Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead. We're going to keep deepening it up because I still can't make a decision. So I'm going to go in with this deep matte brown shade right here. Um, and we're going to put that right into the outer and the inner. Clearly, I'm, I guess I'm doing a halo eye. I guess I made, I made that decision. Um, where's my little BH brush? This is my BH number seven brush. I use this a lot. I love this brush. And I'm going into that dark matte brown shade. Um, I will say so far, these have uh, no fallout and there's very little kick and pan. So the, the pressing and all that is actually pretty good thus far. And I'm only working in a tiny bit of this. I just want to see if I can draw a little bit more inspiration. Um, you guys, I'm, this is going to sound really stupid or, well, it might not to all of you, but to some of you, you might be like, You're, you sound like an idiot. I like to start my eye look and then kind of see what it calls for. I try not to like plan them out super structured because I feel like a lot of times the colors are like, you know, if you plan them out, that you don't let the color story like speak. Not speak, I'm not like trying to be like, oh, it talks to me, but you know what I mean? Like you don't get a, you don't get a real chance to say, oh, you know, these colors, like they just, they kind of made sense or whatever. You don't give it a chance to be natural. And so I want to, I always like to give it that option. Wow, that's pretty. Just going out with the, uh, this is that, the new Y16 brush that has that burnt orange sienna type color on there. 
and I'm running that over top of the brown just to really mix the two together and make sure everything looks diffused. You know the drill, y'all. Don't act like you don't. Now, I really love this shade right here. I don't know what the color of it is. I don't know. But it's this beautiful, like, shimmery, reflectant color. Oh, and see, I think that might be what my face wants. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's what my face wants. <laughs> so I'm going to pop that in the center. And I think, do I want to do it via halo eye? Or do I want to leave it, like, kind of messy? Oh, I think I want to leave it messy. I don't want to be super structured, I don't think, with this one. Every time I make that decision, I'm wrong. Um, I'm going to go in with my Too Faced Glitter Glue, and I'm just going to dot a little bit of it onto the center of my eye. I just made such a mess. That's great. Um, but I'm just going to dot some of this with my finger into the center of the eye, and then place that shimmer shade on top of it. I just very lightly kind of tap this all over where I would cut the crease, but I, again, I just don't want that much structure for this eye look. I feel like it's going to look prettier when it's just a little bit more haphazard. Wow, that is really freaking pretty. And of course, we will be blending the edges and all that good stuff. And I'm just very lightly tapping this. Wow, that manipulates really nicely. And it has no fallout. Like, I didn't have any fallout just now. Woohoo! And I'm going to go in with my little BH Cosmetics brush, a little brush, no additional product. And I'm just going to kind of smudge out the edges a little bit, make sure everything is blended. Whoa, I'm obsessed with that. Now, just on my finger, there's nothing on it or anything. I'm taking a little bit of the shimmery gold shade, and I just want to pat a tiny, tiny, tiny little amount right in, like, the dead center of this. Just, again, a little bit more light, a little dimension to the eye. I love always taking a tiny bit and, like, nothing on this finger and then just kind of patting it out. Um, I love doing this. It really helps kind of pull and continuing to dimensionalize the eye. Wow, that's pretty. I picked up two of those uh, new Morphe brushes, so I can actually say this. With a clean Morphe Y16, I never get to say that, I'm going to go in to this really nice, I'm actually going to pick it up and show you, this really nice like mustardy kind of yellow, and I'm really lightly going to run that on the upper V or like the upper outer area right here into the brow bone. I really want to blend that area out, and I didn't want to accidentally mix any additional product with Oh, I love that color. Oh my God. You guys, you guys. Wow, is it wrong that I'm obsessed with that? Holy shnikes. Okay. Well, now what do I want to do? Holy man, like, what do I want to do for my under eye? Wait a second. I can use, can I use one of these fancy brushes to, uh, to, bright, to brush my bake away? Because that's an option. Hey, look at me go. Finding uses already. And I also thought, by the way, for $125, like, you sent it in, like, this squishy, cheap, like, awful packaging. This is the packaging that you get, like, $10.99 brush sets for around Christmas time from the drugstore. This is that packaging. Like, you really, this is, this is it. This is all you could do for $125. These brushes better be fabulous. Now, I have not touched, played, or done anything with these, so I'm curious. So take all that, that packaging away, and you get these right here. I hope they're showing up. I think this one, okay, it feels, they feel soft, I guess. Um, so I think this is the one I'm going to go with for, oh, it's glued in there. I'm going to use this one for dusting away the bake. It is the number 20 brush, it says, and it does have, like, this really nice, sleek, gold tapered handle here. Um, that feels, okay, it feels nice. I don't know if it's worth $25, but it feels nice. All right, well, it did that really well. Not that that was a hard job, but all right, okay. Now, for the lower lash line, oh my god, I love lower lash lines. I'm going to kind of, I think, layer the lower lash line the same way I layered the upper lash line. So I'm going to start off, I'm only taking this BH Cosmetics brush, and I want to build up the normal orange, the first one that we started working into the crease. I'm going to run that onto the lower lash line because I just want like a nice wash of color over it before I start building up the colors. I kind of almost always do my lower lash lines a little bit out of sequence because, and I don't, it might make more sense now. I've never actually talked about this before, but like, okay, so now that I've got this orange color on, right, I'm going to go in and take another brush, which I really should have had like out and ready, but who thinks that far ahead? Not this girl. Um, now I'm going to go in with my Royal and Langnickel Bomb 40 Shader Brush. This is one of my favorite brushes for the lower lash line because if you can see here, it kind of tapers to a point at the top. Like, not a point, but a nice, like, little, little 
flippy lippy right here so it, it makes it so I can put product on here and then when I smudge it out it smudges out like a fluffy smudger brush if that makes sense I'm gonna go in with that uh, burnt orangey kind of color the one that I worked through the crease the second time and I'm gonna kind of tuck that up a little bit closer to the lashes and I'm going to take my Royal and Lang Nickel Bomb 18, the Smudger Smudger brush, and I'm going to go in with that deep matte brown, and I'm going to run that right up next to the lash line. Now, this is what I meant when I said I do things a little bit out of order. I'm going to go back in with my BH Cosmetics brush, and I'm going to go in again with that burnt yellow color, the one that I did apply last right to the upper brow bone. And I'm going to apply that right underneath, and I kind of take it on my brush, and I like to kind of tuck it up. Like, instead of holding it, normally when we do eyeshadow, we kind of keep it in a straight line. And when I'm working with diffusing the lower line on my lower lash line, if that makes any sense, when I'm really working on diffusing the whole thing, I like to take it, tuck it up underneath, and really make sure that I'm getting access to all of that lower. So I'm kind of, I'm holding the brush more at an upper angle as opposed to a straightforward angle. And I'm just kind of tucking it right up under there. Otherwise, if you go in from this angle, you're going to end up smudging it too far down. Trust me, I know. I've been there. You're welcome. So I just like to take this, and then I'm kind of tucking it up there in tiny little amounts. That's why I keep going back into the palette. Because I don't want this to be a color that stands out, because it's yellow. So I would look very jaundiced very quickly. But I do want it to be one that kind of helps diffuse. Now, it does look like that looks fine all by itself, but let's just say, you know, for shits and giggles, let's say you didn't like that, you'd be able to go in with, say, like this white, there's like a very nice white shade in here, the one, I think it's Chad, it's the same color as my skin tone, basically, and you could go in with this, and you could really detail it out, smudge that around on the lower lash line, and it would help you to back up any, um, any color that you didn't like, say I would have taken this yellow down too far, or whatever, I could use that shade and kind of smudge it back up, and it would help keep it in line with what I what with what I'm looking for okay so that looks literally stunning I'm obsessed and I'm obsessed with my lower lash line wow that looks pretty okay all right so I'm gonna run I just had to like zoom you in so you could see I'm gonna run off of camera do this eye and then we're gonna come back and uh, just as like a little fun surprisey surprise even though it's probably in the thumbnail so it's probably not a surprise but we have the new Morphe this is the 8L low lo-fi sculpt and shimmer highlight and contour palette so okay stop it stop it stop it so we're gonna go in with this guy here as soon as i get back and we're gonna use some of those brushes from that cafe on Dista and see what we think because girl we gotta decide all right so we're back we have the eyes done i love the way that this turned out now my only thought critique obviously i would have to holy shit oh my god the heart attack was so real <laughs> Why is it every time that phone rings it scares the living shit out of me? So now, as I said before, we are going to jump into this Morphe palette right here. This is the 8L Lo-Fi Highlight and Contour Palette. Um, you do also get like a huge mirror right here, and then these are your shades. Now, there are four kind of contoury bronzer shades over here, four shimmers over here. Now, hold on. Hold that thought. Because there's also a Kat Von D, and I swatched them all on one hand. So before I show you, I want to show you all the items. This is the Kat Von D Metal Crush Gold School um, Highlight. Now, this is the packaging. Okay, let's talk about it. It's beautiful. It's reflective. We can see it there. Nice mirror. All that's fine. This is the highlight. And when I first saw it, I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like a white highlight that's kind of a ballsy move well then I swatched it and it feels like actual glitter so I'm just like oh good so let's show you the swatches real quick because I have swatched obviously the entire Morphe palette as well as that Kat Von D metal crush one so we're gonna kind of run through the swatches so these four right here are the four that are in the contour shade for Morphe. These four over here are the highlights, obviously, in Morphe. And this one right here is the Kat Von D Metal Crush. Now, I want to show you this up close. So that is it with a built-up thick swatch, right? Right there. But I also want to show you this up close. It's very glittery, like obnoxiously glittery it looks like straight glitter but that is neither here nor there I do want to go ahead and bronze up my face real quick I am gonna be using this big uh, powdery brush because I don't think let me just double check here I don't think these are gonna work for that I'll probably end up using this little guy for blush and then this one for under eye when I go in to brighten it up so we'll use it for that 
And what color out of here do I want to use? I think I want to go in with the shade Donut. It looks nice and cool. Um, if it doesn't work, I can always blend it out a little bit with that guy and we'll see. So let's go ahead. I'm obsessed, by the way. Full size mirror on this guy. Full size. I'm kind of obsessed with that. Um, so let's just kind of take and see. Oh, lots, lots happens on the brush. All right. That's pretty. I feel like this is one you guys need to not be so close for. Sorry. Um, okay, so that's actually a really nice color. I don't know if I love this brush for this, even though I know that that's not what it's for. Um, hmm. These brushes, they they're they like they look cool aesthetically, but I'm not sure if ergonomically they're very pleasing, and I don't know how I feel about them yet. I think that the brush part's okay, and I think they look cool, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. They feel like they feel cheap. You know what I mean? Like the handle, it's plastic. It's not like, is that plastic? Yeah, that, I think that's plastic. And it just, it doesn't feel like quality at all. Like for me, again, and maybe this is just me, but if I was putting out a palette and it was like to culminate my 10 years, I would want it to be like the most luxurious feeling, fabulous looking situation. Oh, in the first part of the video. See what I mean? Did you see how that just like fell out of my hand? Not ergonomic at all. Um, which I know a lot of her brushes are designed like this, so I know that it's normal, but if you're going to design it, that's cool, but you should have it be like a metal weighted handle so there's a little bit of weight in the ass of it to kind of hold it in your hand. Again, look at me, like designing brushes. Um, I was kind of bummed out when I went to order this, and I've talked about this in my vlog. I've talked about this at the beginning of this video. There was this weird, like, chest thing that was available for purchase with this order or with this collection, and I felt like the chest, of all things, is what they put the money into, like, designing and having it be really high quality. Like, it looked really nice, and I was like, it's $150. I'm not getting it because I don't need it. And I was just a little bit frustrated, like, especially now that I've played with some of this stuff, like... Of all the things you could have put money into, instead of putting money and design into the products, like the brushes, and, and making sure that they're perfect, you spent money on creating a chest, a collector edition chest that's $150. Wow. I'm also not loving, like, the way that this brush picks up and distributes product. Well, I think we got the job done. I just don't know. I don't know that I'm obsessed with this. I don't know. I just, it, it, you know what, I'm just like, huh? Now, next up, we are going to go in with the I'm Not Blushing Duo from Mac and Patrick, Mac and Patrick Star. What is wrong with me? Um, we are going to use the, it looks, I'm, uh, it looks like a blush brush, but it's the number two brush from this collection, the Kat Von D thing. Um, and we're going to use this little guy. We're just going to mix both of these colors together. I did just talk about this. Oh, that, okay, wow. It definitely kicks up a lot in this blush, which I've been using this for like a week straight and I haven't had that happen. And it just like kicked it everywhere. Okay. Um, anyways, I will go ahead and link up here the uh, the video that I just talked about these in. It was my month end favorites for April. I'll link it here again. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's just kind of apply this. This is a really dense brush for this. Okay, I can honestly tell you I would never use this this brush again like the only thing I would maybe use this for would have been blush and it's so weird and small and compact I would never use that again all right so now that we got that out of the way we're gonna go in with my it cosmetics this is my heavenly Lux number three jumbo brush and I like to really just use this to kind of blend the elements on the cheek together and after using that tiny little brush I'd say we need to now I'm going to go in with the number 25 brush. This has got like this interesting kind of pointed taper to it. And lately, what I've loving doing, what I've loving doing, okay, what I've been loving doing has been um, taking like a whiter kind of um, like more, op more opaque, but not a foundation color, kind of just like a really nice matte color, kind of like the one you'll find in the uh, Park Ave Princess palette right here these two shades love them and i've been taking them and kind of pressing them under the eye and after i do blush and all that i've noticed that it just helps to kind of liven up and rebrighten that area so i'm just taking some of this wow these brushes literally make like things that don't normally kick up for me is making them kick up like crazy and we're just gonna set this right under here that really does a great job at just like brightening up the whole face yes girl needs a bright face because you girl don't always sleep that song 
Oh, and I'm also going to go in and run a little bit of that same brown color on my nose with my, oh, with my Real Techniques. This is her, the setting brush, but I use this for my nose because I love it. And I'm going to go back into that shade Donut and just run a tiny bit on the sides of my nose. All right, time to set that face. As you guys know, and if you don't know, I always set my face before I move on to highlight because it helps me snatchify. I'm going to go in with my Iconic London Prep Set Glow right here um, just because it's pretty. Now, while that is still damp, we are going to go in with a little bit of this one right here. We're going to see if it really does look glittery on the skin or if I'm just over-exaggerating. So, let's go in with my, I use this all the time for highlight. This is the Morphe R36. And uh, we're going to go in, oh my god, like even on the brush it just picks up as glitter. Ugh, yuck. Okay, so it gives off an okay sheen as well, but it does look very glittery. And I do not like a glittery highlight. I literally just picked up my camera and like brought you guys so close. Do you see all the glitter? Okay, well it also says on the back of this package here, um, that is, a, it does say it's an electrifying glitter highlight. Let me make that clear. It does say glitter highlight. Um, granted, <laughs> but it says layer or wear alone. So, and you can highlight everywhere. So what I want to do is go in with a little bit of like this Morphe guy. Which shade do I want here? I'm going to go in with the shade Lit, which looks really, really yellow, but it's swatched more golden. So I'm just going to take some of this on that same brush and kind of go over this highlight. Oh my god, and there's like a line right here. You can see it. I've been blending on this line forever, and I can't make it go away because there's just a line of like straight glitter from that freaking Kat Von D one. Oh my gosh. So on this side, I'm going to go in with just that Morphe Lit shade and uh, see how it looks by itself, if it looks better. I think that that is such an odd color on my skin tone. Like, I've never went in with a color like that. Oh my god, look at the, oh my god. So this side has had that glitter part down on it. This side did not. You can definitely see a difference. Oy, oy, oy. I am, just because I'm apparently a masochist, I'm going to go in with a little bit of that Kat Von D glitter on top of this side. Because right now they don't match. And I want to see if it layers a little bit less glittery maybe. Because it does add like this really nice pop of vibrancy to it. I just wish there wasn't so much damn glitter. Yeah, I think it like if you if you are gonna pick this up for whatever reason, um, I do think you're gonna like it better layered on top because you see less straight glitter and it gives off more of a shine. When you're up close, you can still see glitter. I would not no. I would never buy this again. Like I'll probably return it. But I will say. Um, it does look a lot better on top than not on top, but I have to highlight the rest of my face now because I look psychotic. All right, and this might seem redundant, but now I go in with a different sp setting, a spreading spray. Mm -hmm. I can't go in with too much of the iconic one. It looks a little too glittery, so now I'm going to go in with the MAC Fix Gold Light. Um, fixing six settings plus the spray, you guys, the spray. All right, and now while that dries, which let's go ahead and like help it for a second here, let's talk about the other items that are in this collection, if I can get them. You have three more things. We have the tattoo liner, we have a liquid lipstick that is gold, and a red regular lipstick. You guys, I was really disappointed in the cohesion when it comes to this part. Like, this is the part that I was the most nervous to talk about on camera. So let's start with the Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. This is her tattoo liner. It's the standard one. It's in black. My freaking nose issue is so bad right here. And it's in trooper black. Now, it does have, like, this really beautiful, like, oh, it's been 10 years detail, right? Like, we know I love a good detail, but it's pretty, I'm pretty sure it's just the same tattoo liner. You guys, I just took a thing and I wiped off all my swatches and I removed the highlight swatch and literally little flakes of glitter just went all over, like, poof. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and swatch this and see if it's spiders. Okay, so I just did a one black line of that right there. We're going to come back in a second, see if it's spiders. And in the meantime, let's talk about this Kat Von D. This is the Studded Kiss Cream Lipstick in Santa Sangri, Sangre, I don't know what to tell you. Really nice gold packaging. And let's take a look at the lipstick. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, the component is awesome. I know that she's well known for her black studded lipstick container. So I, the, again, 10th anniversary. Um, okay, so let's see what we got here. That's pretty. What, how much do you get? That's all you get. That's it. That's all the product. That can't be right. Hold on. I'm sorry. Wait a second. 0.12 ounces of lipstick. You guys, that studded kiss cream lipstick, it's $19. Hold on. 
wow, maybe it is the standard size and I've just never noticed it. One from Flower Beauty had .11. This one from Marc Jacobs has .12. Wow. Y'all, I didn't realize we were getting screwed so hard. So let's go ahead and swatch this lipstick. Okay, seriously? Okay, wow, one swipe. That's okay, that's pretty. Um, it in no way matches my eye look today. That was, okay, I'll save my final thoughts till the end, but that's the lipstick. And now let's take a look at this liquid lipstick. I promise I am gonna just like do my final wrap ups at the end. This is the Gold School Liquid Lipstick Everlasting Shimmer Veil. And it does say liquid lipstick. So, whole, oh, it's gold. It's, it's gold. What? I'm sorry. What? This is a liquid lipstick. Liquid lipstick. Okay. Well, um, it's safe to say neither of those match my face today. So, okay, cool. All right, so let's play a game. This is going to be a surprise to everyone, including myself. I'm going to run off of camera. I'm going to apply this tattoo liner because it looks like it did not spider on my hand. So, win. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to throw this on and I'm going to throw on mascara and a lip, and I don't know which one yet, and I'll come back on and I'm gonna run through all these products and give you some final thoughts because I have a lot to say. All right, guys, so I went ahead, I got everything all finished up on the lips. I just took a little bit of my Buxom Gloss over the MAC Hug Me. It's not a really, like, super opaque formula. It's a very sheer in color, so I thought that it would be a good compliment just to, like, you know, keep everything a little more neutral and a little bit more subdued. I was kind of really feeling that whole, like, uh, what did I say before? Like a sunset vibe, and I wanted to just keep everything, like, really calm and chill. But oh, now I need to wipe that off because <gasps> your girl's gonna end up wearing it. So... Let's give some final thoughts. I want to run through these products real quick and tell you what I like, what I would work with, and what I would, quite frankly, return, because hello. So, also, um, I realized I didn't give you all the prices. That is so loud. So, let's start off with the eyeshadow palette. Again, $52. Um, I will use it again. I will try to keep working with it and see if I like the other shades in it. If I am reading this correctly, this highlight is $30. And no, like you could tell me it was $10 and it's still not my favorite highlight. I do not like this. Um, I personally just do not like glitter as my highlight. I feel like it looks cheap and uh, my highlight today doesn't look good and I feel like this was like a huge reason why. I'm not going to completely say that that Morphe highlight was like fabulous or anything, but I feel like this had a lot to do with it. I'm just not a big fan of this personally, so this one will probably be a return. Now, the lip cream is $19 and I was looking at the tone of the red in this and I'm not a big fan of like this orangey undertoned red. It's kind of in between. It's just not a like true blue on undertone red which is my favorite type of red like the like a Fenty red that's like red and this is kind of more like red you know what I mean so I'm not sure um, how how in love with this I am it is $19 which is pretty standard pricing so this one I'm kind of like on the fence about um, the tattoo liner or wait I'm sorry the everlasting lipstick the gold lipstick I do not understand the purpose of this which again I have one more thought at the tail end of this video to throw in there but this um, according to what I'm seeing is $22 which is ridiculous. I would not buy this again. I would return it. I don't see a point for it. It does dry down matte, so it's not something that you're going to be able to like pop in the center of a lip unless it's a matte lip. Um, it's very opaque, which is great if you like an all gold lip. Personally, for me, that's not my aesthetic. When I got this, I didn't, I guess I didn't read it well enough. I thought it was not a matte liquid lipstick that would like dry down and be so, so intense. So that was kind of a bummer. So now that brings us to the tattoo liner, which is $20, which is actually $2 less than the gold lipstick. Just saying. Um, anyways, what I want to say about this is that any, and this is just like a pro tip from me to you, it did not spider on my hand. Now, if you're ever looking for one of these and you're like, how do I know if it's going to spider or, you know, kind of like go into my eyelids and not stay put, you can take any black felt tip liner like this, do a swatch on your hand, and then wait to see if it kind of filters out into the cracks on your hand. Um, not cracks, you know what I mean? Like those tiny little bloops that you have. And if it does that, the odds are are, it will do it on your hand at least that is or on your eye that is my experience anyways um, so for me this isn't bad it didn't spider on my hand but I did have a little tiny spider on my eyelid it might have just like caught a patch of glitter funny I mean that can happen from time to time so it might not have been the liners fault I do feel like because of the way this liner is it kind of like a normal felt tip liner is again felt tip it feels like how it is a literally like a marker this one is kind of odd in the sense that it almost opens up more like a flow 
pen, if you've ever used one of those, how like when you press down it kind of opens up a little bit and then glides product out. That's a little bit more what this one reminds me of. It's like a hybrid between the two. So the one thing I don't like about this particular pen is I have a difficult time getting a really, really thin felt tip precise line, which is why my liner is a little bit thicker than normal. So for me, it's not bad. I'll probably end up keeping this, um, but oh. All right, so now we are to the last thing in this collection, which is the brush set. Um, I don't think this is worth it. I'm not a fan. I, I just, I'm not a fan. I don't like the profile of these brushes. They're not ones that I reach for personally. They're calling this one right here the foundation brush. I would never use this as a foundation brush. I like a flat top kabuki like the Y6 from Morphe. And then this little thing right here, again, not my jam for concealer or anything, really. Um, so I don't know. For me, the brush set isn't worth it. I think that the top part feels nice. I'm just not a big fan of the way that these go into my product. I feel like for some reason these kind of like jam in in such a way that it was like causing severe kick in every single product I used, which I've used these products a ton. Not the Morphe palette, but all the other ones, and I've never experienced that. And I also don't like the fact that these are not weighted. This is very plastic and like cheap. I don't know if this is plastic. It might be metal. I don't know. But I feel like if you are going to do this long slender handle, it looks really nice and sleek aesthetically, but the, the hold of it doesn't feel ergonomically correct. So if it were me, I would have actually taken this bottom piece right here and I would have weighted it. So like the bottom portion from say here to here had a nice weight to it it was maybe just thicker more dense metal maybe it wasn't hollow that way when you put it in your hand this bottom piece was able to rest and you'd be able to have a little bit more control of this part by having more of an ass to it so it wouldn't like want to fly around on me that's just me I'm a big believer in ergonomic brushes that's why I love the Wayne Goss brushes I feel like these are all weighted perfectly because they have continuous weight throughout the entire handle so that's just my personal opinion so those for me will definitely be a return Turn. Not because I think the price is bad. I just want to make that clear. I do think that $25 for a brush, I've paid more than that for pretty much every single one of the It Cosmetics brushes I've ever purchased. Obviously, the Wayne Goss brushes are very expensive, um, and I don't have a problem paying money for quality. I just don't know that I feel like these fall into that category. So that's kind of that's kind of where I sit on those. And you guys, that is it. That completes this video. I hope that you were able to hang in there, and if you really liked it and you have something to say, give it a big thumbs up. Leave what you have to say down below. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and you guys thank you so much for watching oh and don't forget in the description box are all my social media handles instagram has been popping lately because your girl loves a good insta and yeah that's it you guys have a great day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and i will see you in the next one Kefan D collection not sure that i loved it wasn't really excited before i bought it but i didn't now i'm not so happy oh well it was fun why do i sing so much i don't know eh, eh.